was like a mummy. <laughs> <laughs> so, I was saying, okay. <laughs> so I, I didn't have any publication and all that. And that was just terrible. And I and plus I was like two years and a half, almost three years without no results. And then one day I say to him like, you know what, if we all change this thing, I will quit. I will jump in the river, in the Chicago River, and that's the end of the story. I was really thinking about doing it. I mean, not jumping in the Chicago River, but quit. Because that was so hard. Science is like a, a chain of terrible and unfortunate events. And then you get dark breakthrough that made you feel like, yeah, it's like cooking. Yeah, it's like a drum. You need this drum, and then you feel like, oh my god, this is so good. Anyway. The thing is, when I told him that, I guess my face was so sad that he said, like, okay, let's change the subject. <laughs> so he moved me from one model to another that he actually was an expert because the other one he didn't have a clue. And in six months, I got all the data that I need with all these fancy techniques that I was using to finish my PhD. And I graduated. And it was awesome. But I suffered a lot before. <laughs> so when I finished, I say, okay, what do we do now? I still want to be a scientist and have that and all that, but I need publication. I have non publication. <laughs> so I moved to Montreal. And I bring here my drawings, my bagpipe, <coughs> yes, I play bagpipe also, uh, my science, and then I came to live with this guy over there who is my husband today. <laughs> so it was an awesome move. But meanwhile, I started to do science here, and I realized that nothing changed. Science is still. Terrible. <laughs> and I was at the same time like, oh my god, I don't get to do anything. And because at the beginning I was like, yes, I will change the world, I will score things, and we will change the world, and nothing of that happened. <laughs> and I was feeling really bad about it. And the problem with that was that I started to question myself if this was actually the path that I should follow. And I started to think, maybe I should move from this and do something meaningful. Science is really meaningful, don't, don't take it wrong. <laughs> but faster meaningful. <laughs> so, and I enter in this crisis because a part of that, look how complex I am. In winter I get really bad because I have seasonal affective disorder. So my brain goes like, let's think about it. And it's just terrible because I learn a lot, but it's really hard. And it was in that time, that I start to think about it and what to do with this. So two years in this crisis happened, and then one day I was just like, a break. I was looking at Facebook, and I was like making comments or likes and things like that, and saying like, hey, I'm a friend in the world. And I start to realize that actually, a lot of people have tons of facts, but they don't use it. Like, we see people today like denying climate change, being anti-vaxxer, we see politicians using hate and misinformation to make people vote for them. And I start to think, like, well, what happened here? Why, when we have all this information, people are still taking these bad decisions? And I saw myself, and I feel shame, because the only real work I was doing was giving likes, reposts, and comments. So I was basically being an internet warrior, doing nothing really meaningful. So I decided I should do something. I went to a Canadian Central for Neuroscience meeting, and then I met there a person called Catherine Todd, who is a, a magnificent scientist and do a lot of outreach. She puts scientists with politicians together and policymakers to try to do a real change. And I thought, well, if she can do things like that, I can do things like that. And then suddenly, it came to 